Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal. My favorite class to play in World of Warcraft currently is Rogue. Has been for a couple of expansions, and if you're someone who's thinking about playing a class going forward in 915, Rogue should definitely be on your radar, especially if you were ever interested in diving into Mythic Pluses. In fact, Rogues have been one of those classes that were the first ones to do a plus 30 Mythic Plus dungeon. Over the last few patches, their performance have been incredible. Whether you pick up Outlaw Rogue, Subtlety, or Assassination, whether it is raiding, dungeons, or PvP. So with the new patch, and with the fact that you can level alts far easier with 915, I decided to talk and highlight Rogues as we are for Mythic Pluses, in case you're looking for a new character to play. And I want to disclose to you how all these specs feel to play, what are some of the big impactful changes, how are they performing so far for Mythic Pluses in the first week of 915, and how well do I think they're going to be performing in the next few weeks, considering things like some of the abilities being uncapped in 915, but also the options and opportunities to play different covenants when you pick up your rogue. Right before we discuss this, most of you guys watch these videos are not subscribed, so subscribe, hit the bell if you watch the videos anyway, especially if you want to catch more discussions like these or future 9.2 updates going forward. As you watch this video, when you're trying to figure out which spec should you play, really just go with your gut and don't let this video discourage you from playing any of these specs. Whether it is Mythic Raiding, Mythic Plus Dungeons or PvP, Rogues of all three specs have actually had a pretty decent representation and have performed very, very well, where in Mythic Pluses, they can do 10s, 15s and slam out 20s easily. This video would just harshly put a light on rogues in terms of three different specs and things to watch out for when it comes to picking the one that's perfect for you when diving into mythic plus content starting off with a black sheep that is assassination while not the most popular melee for mythic pluses it is definitely one of the better ones for that content assassination rogues are known for amazing incredible single target damage output that have made them very well known inside of raiding content as well as in pvp where it comes to locking someone down and focusing them down with a vendetta they're perfect for it this damage just translates pretty well into mythic pluses either way in mythic pluses having some focused single target damage can go a long way a lot of people are going to want to look for that big overall just how much aoe damage can you put out However, being able to eliminate that one enemy instead of a trash pack that's the caster that's just going to do the most amount of damage or just has the most amount of health, being able to focus down and funnel damage into that enemy while also doing AoE is important as well. And Assassination can easily do that, making sure that everybody is dotted while the primary target is rotten down the hardest. For patch 915, Assassination saw a few buffs, primarily with the AoE damage. Where this spec is mostly known for single target, their AoE did suffer a little bit at least when comparing to Outlaw Rogue spec, which is known for AoE, and even Subtlety Rogues to some extent. For Assassination, we saw Phantom Knives and Crimson Tempest getting soft capped, so they will hit more than just the eight targets cap, which allows Assassination a couple of things. One, common point building in big trash packs is super easy. You'll go from Phantom Knives, full common points, and invest in them into damage over time abilities, slice and dices, or back to back in Venoms, or even Crimson Tempest, which can also be spread to multiple enemies. Phantom Knives also can spread your poisons to every single target. For a class that's all about damage over time, Crimson Tempest and Poison, while not the biggest portion of your damage, having every single enemy ticking with those dots is actually quite huge. The way you can even build your Assassination Rogue, you can really go in on as much AoE damage as possible, or even focus on more single target, with different legendaries, conduit setups, as well as even talents. Which is fantastic for players that want to try different builds or try different strategies depending on a dungeon. Well, dungeons like Tirna Sai or Theater of Pain, dungeons that don't have too many enemies packed together, where an aggressive playstyle of cleaving enemies with dots might be a lot stronger. In a dungeon like Halls of Atonement for big trash pulls, you can go for a full big Phantom Knives AoE build where you're trying to drop dots on every single enemy. This AoE damage output is definitely an improvement, and I wonder how Assassination will perform a couple of weeks or a couple of months from now. Is there a potential legendary or a covenant conduit setup that will allow Assassination to really climb beyond what it's available to do currently? Because it's performed pretty well so far, but it is still, to this day, heavily overshadowed by subtlety and outward. And I think it's honestly the biggest drawback. Like, you could play Assassination or you have Subtlety and Outlaw that are considered to be far stronger within Mythic Plus content. So most players would choose to play one of the strongest specs in the game. But if you did want to push as an Assassination Rogue, there's definitely a pretty high ceiling. And Rogues are continuing to climb towards that ceiling and find out that there's actually a little bit more, a little bit further that they can keep going. 
Assassination is definitely one of the strong specs that if played properly in the right Mythic Plus group can really shine bright. And while we refer to it as the black sheep of the specs, it is so fun just putting dots on everything. I really enjoy its playstyle and just how impactful you are with Vendetta just feels like you eviscerate things off of your screen. So it's generally, genuinely really fun spec, especially with so many different choices you have between covenants. And then we have the Outer Rogue, which is my favorite spec, so I am definitely going to let you know that I do have a bias. This is my favorite spec because of the Roll the Bones mechanic and a bit of RNG. I love grapple hooking around all over the place, especially with higher elevations than their Z-axis, like in capital cities. I love how aggressive play can reduce the cooldown of so many of the specs, defensive and offensive cooldowns, depending if you PvE or PvP and just how fast paced it is. I mean, the APM required to play out the rogue, especially if you go for like a pure single target build is really up there. Going into 915, out the rogues came in with a little bit of a detriment. While all these different classes and specs were getting buffed, where so many of their abilities were going past and way beyond the hit cap, out the rogues were still capped. To this day, they are still hard capped, most likely from the horrors of Battle for Azeroth. Back in Battle for Azeroth, out the rogues were uncapped in their AOE damage. It got so bad that so many groups saw it common to bring two Outer Rogues into your Mythic Plus run, because the amount of damage they did simply made these dungeons easier. You're taking a class with a lot of stunts, gouges, interrupts, and other ways to disrupt casts from enemies with a shorter than you needed blind if you needed to, with a bunch of defenses, and of course it became the Swiss Army Knife instead of a Mythic Plus. It just made dungeon runs easier with the damage they did. So, while Outer Rogues didn't get buffed in AOE damage, I think mostly to preserve their dominance from really blowing out of control like it did in BFA. And I do think there's some advantage to it because we do have a variety of classes. We have mages, boomkins, hunters, warlocks, all variety of different classes in the game and other melee that are also able to compete in Mythic Pluses and it's not just stacked with Outer Rogues. So, 915 didn't really make us feel any different. We didn't really gain any kind of massive buffs out of it. We do, however, get to play with different covenants, and that's where the fun begins. Seriously, if you want just to play a very fun, fa fast-paced build where you just have a ton of energy, ton of call points, constantly pressing abilities, Necrolord, Outlaw Rogue might be just something you need if you have those fast switch fingers. Because the playstyle is really all over the place. There's so much going on constantly at once. If you were ever felt like you were playing an energy related class or energy and common points and you felt like you were sluggish, this Outlaw Rogue Necro playstyle will put it completely on its head. But you can even play Ventir, which is a legitimately good playstyle that's pushing keys. And also Kyrian, that's also performing really well. So when you play Outlaw Rogue, you actually have some covenant choices, which when it comes to doing Mythic Plus dungeons, if you need a Kyrian in the group, a Necrolord or a Ventir for any of the dungeon buffs, you are the easiest class that can swap to those covenants. And our damage profile is still fantastic, and I don't think it's going to get much worse. We're only looking at first week of 915 as well. Where Outlaw Rogue currently is right now with 915, literally first week, we've done fantastic so far. And as we get different affixes and different combinations, I don't think our profile is going to get worse going forward. I think we're still going to be a fairly competitive spec, though maybe not guaranteed at the number one spot anymore. That number one spot is going to most likely Windwalker Monks. But if Windwalker Monks aren't number one, it's probably going to be Subtlety Rogues. First of all, Subtlety has gone massive gains in 915. Big AoE damage output, allowing your Shirk and Storm, your Black Powder, as well as even talents like Secret Technique to hit more enemies than just 8 target cap, which gives them an incredible amount of damage output, especially with their playstyle where they stack buffs on top of buffs on top of buffs, where just all their abilities are going to do a ton of damage. Subtlety is a fantastic spec that synergizes well in single target that Assassination benefits from and really reigns supreme in, but also fantastic in AoE, which is what Outlaw Rogue is normally known for. Subtlety does have a bit of a dead spot when doing Mythic Plus is like a two target, three target with like rupture dotting things and doing single target damage or trying to AoE and eviscerate. It does feel a little bit awkward in that regard, but besides that, most Mythic Plus groups are going to want to pull big as many mobs as they can, as many mobs as the tank can handle, and Subtlety can play into that easily. Another advantage of Subtlety, and they've always had it, is the ability to funnel damage, where you'll be able to do AoE damage, and from that AoE damage, your finishers are going to get funneled, so you have this funnel focus output. 
It's kind of like the opposite of an Outlaw Rogue, where Outlaw Rogue will focus single target on one primary enemy, turn on Blade Flurry and they're splashing damage to everybody around you. Subtlety will use the ability of Shirk and Storm to build combo points for every enemy they hit around them generates a combo point. Then they can invest those combo points into any ability they like, which can be Eviscerate or Black Powder. Black Powder is generally better if you're trying to go for more overall damage, which looks really good on the details, but that's not always what kills the bosses and certain powerful, dangerous enemies inside of Mythic Pluses. Sometimes that single target damage actually makes your dungeon run for your group easier than just better overall damage. So Subtlety can do more of that funnel eviscerate single target while being able to build comp points from AOE counterparts with a lot of cooldown reduction elements to it with shadow blades augmented all the damage you do with maybe a vent your play style for even more shadow damage on top of it which culminates into a very deadly single target damage output and while funneling and single target is all good the AOE damage also saw buffs we did see a lot of abilities uncapped and if you do want to go for the biggest overall you can easily do that with subtlety Numerically, Subtlety has it all. They're doing some of the highest keys out there. They're performing some of the best when it comes to rogues. They're pushing for really high-end keys, but how do they feel to play? Does this spec feel like garbage to play, even though it performs well, or is it actually fun? Single target, it's fantastic. I love the different cooldowns of abilities and how there's a lot more of that player involvement. Like, the cooldowns aren't just sitting there. As you commit comp points to finishers, you reduce the cooldown of Shadow Dance, and then it's all about syncing those cooldowns together, with the players choosing when they want to sync stuff. So the better you are managing those cooldowns of subtlety, the better the damage you see, which I love that haptic feedback. The AOE damage is hilariously easy, especially when you pull like past six mobs, it just rounds down to spamming Shurik of Storm to build comp points, a black powder for AOE, or as we talked about earlier, Eviscerate if you want to funnel. It is hilariously easy just how much damage you can put out in AOE scenarios. As long as the tank pulls big, you can do big damage with just two buttons. Besides that, there is a bit of awkwardness with subtlety on 2 target, 3 target, and maybe like 4 target cleave. It's not really something to complain about, but it kind of weaves your single target and AoE playstyle a little bit together. Like you kind of do half and half and you put a lot of ruptures on things which can feel a little awkward. It's just not as satisfying as a pure single target or pure AoE, but besides that, it's a great feeling spec, lots of fun cooldowns, lots of cooldown reduction so you get those big buttons back quicker. Just overall legitimately fun. So hopefully this video gave you guys some ideas of which specs are perfect for you. And I kind of rank these specs in terms of how good they're performing with the Mythic Pluses. Starting off with Assassination, which isn't terrible, but it's not top tier melee ever. With Outlaw Rogue that has dropped a little bit in popularity, but I think it'll still continue to be a strong representation for Rogues. And then Subtlety, which is the new favorite for so many, has become just extremely popular. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.